Hi, do you have a quadrilateral or parallelogram test coming up? Let's get you ready for that. I'm Tammy and I do math for coffee and I pulled up some of my test questions to go over with you. What is the name of this figure? If you know it, great. If you don't know it, let's review real quick quadrilaterals can be sorted out based on how many parallel sides they have. These two have just one pair of parallel sides. All these have two pairs of parallel sides and this little guy has no parallel sides. Now these guys all have names. That's a trapezoid. This is an isosceles trapezoid because the two sides that are not parallel are going to be the same length. This is a parallelogram and they can have a lot of different shapes but they all look like a slanty rectangle, rectangle, and a rhombus, and a square. And the last one is called a kite. It looks like a kite. So that one's pretty handy to remember. Now, all of these shapes have their own properties with regards to the relationships between the sides and the angles and the diagonals. So I made a cheat sheet. I'll put a link in the description and maybe I'll put one up here in the corner. You can download this PDF and I'll refer to it as we go when I think we need to. Okay, so let's go back to this problem. One pair of parallel sides, that is a trapezoid. What is this? None of the sides are parallel. I've got nothing marked as congruent, so we have to assume that all the sides are different lengths. I know it's not an isosceles trapezoid. It almost looks like a kite, but a kite actually does have some congruent pieces to it. Go back and look at that cheat sheet and you can see that. So I'm going to go with none of these on this one. Find the measure of each angle indicated. So I need to know how big this angle is anything that is a closed figure that has four sides, all internal angles will add up to 360. Remember when all internal angles in a triangle added up to 180? The rule for four-sided figures is that it's 360. So just subtract all of those angles that you see from 360 and whatever is left is going to be your answer and that'll be 80 solve for x. The same concept, but it's a little more difficult now because we have some uh, algebraic expressions in here. Let's add the x's together first. I have 15x and 22x. That's 37x. Now add in all the number pieces. 75 plus 5 plus 3 plus 92. That's going to be 175. And all of that's equal to 360 degrees. So just solve this equation like you did in algebra. We'll subtract 175 from both sides. And we end up with 37x equals 185. Divide both sides by 37. And we get x equals 5. And that's all we were supposed to do is solve for x. So the correct answer is C. Find the measure of each angle indicated. Now this, it looks like the same kind of problem because it is the same kind of problem, but you got to go one extra step. They don't want you to just solve for X. They want you to figure out how big angle Q is. Well, angle Q is down here. It's this guy. So once we've solved for X, we're going to multiply it times 16 and our answer is going to be a degree measurement. We can't assume it's 105. Don't go there. And it's not even one of the choices, but even if it wasn't multiple choice, do not assume that. This is not a parallelogram. You have nothing here to tell you that this is anything but a wonky quadrilateral. So every one of these angles could be different. All right, let's add everything up. 10x and 16x is 26x. 105.73 is going to be 178, and that's going to equal 360. I subtracted 178, and I get 26x equals 182. Now divide by 26, and we end up with x equals 7. They want to know the measure of angle Q, so you got to substitute that in by multiplying times 16, so we end up with 112. The correct answer is C. We're going to do that again. Now we need to find the measure of angle X, which is this guy up here. We're going to do this all the same way. Let's add the X's together. There are 16 X's inside here all together. Adding the numbers, we're going to get 184 and that equals 360. I'm going to subtract 184 from both sides. That's 16 X equals 176. Divide both sides by 16 and I get X equals 11. Again, that's not going to be your answer. It's not wrong. You just have to go one more step. Now we're going to multiply it times 8 and add 3 to it. And we're going to end up with 91. Number 7 is a parallelogram. And that's important because when you look at the problems we just did and compare it to this one, it seems like we don't have enough information. Let's pull up the cheat sheet and look at the properties of parallelograms. We have two pairs of parallel sides. 
which is nice, but we're working with angles right now. Opposite angles are congruent. That means this angle and this angle will be the same size. This angle down here, the 80, and this one will also be the same size. So you could copy these all down and then set them all equal to 360. That's possible, but let's keep going here. Opposite sides are congruent, diagonals. We don't have diagonals here, we're not playing that. But it says consecutive angles are supplementary. Consecutive angles are angles that are right next to each other as you go around. Not across, but next to each other. Supplementary means, remember from your first semester of geometry, that means they add up to 180 degrees. So the 2 plus 14x plus 80 is going to equal 180. And now we have an algebra equation to solve. Algebra! 14x plus 82 is 180. I subtracted 82 from both sides. 14x equals 98. And divide. x equals 7. Kaboom! The answer is E. Number eight, ooh, we just went over those properties. Remember what it says about opposite angles in a parallelogram? Set them equal to each other. 19x plus five equals 20x. Algebra, subtract 19x from both sides. Five equals x, and gosh, that would be great, but none of our answers are five because they want us to find the actual angle. But we're gonna have to put this five into this expression, and we're gonna end up with 100 degrees. Number nine, solve for x, each figure is a parallelogram. Well, we're talking about diagonals now, and it says diagonals bisect each other. Okay, what does that mean? It means they cut each other in half. It doesn't mean they're the same. One of these looks longer than the other one, but where they meet in the middle is going to cut each one exactly in half. So this side equals that side, and this side equals that side. ET is 22, so this piece is ET, and TG is here. Oh, look at that. They're on the same diagonal. They're half of the same one. That means those two things are equal to each other. Time for algebra. 3x plus 1 equals 22. Subtract 1 from both sides. 3x equals 21. And we have x equals 7. Kaboom. You have to know the properties in order to be able to do that. The math isn't that hard. We're playing with diagonals again. We know xd is here and xz, whoa, tricky. That's the whole thing. I know that if x to d is 4x, then d to z must be 4x too. To get from here to here, you would add those two together and that'll be equal to the whole thing. So that's how I'm setting up my algebra. 4x plus 4x, this side plus this side, equals the whole thing, 7x plus 2. 4x and 4x is 8x, subtracting 7x from both sides, we get x equals 2, which is going to feel like you did it wrong because your choice isn't there, but you did not. It said to find the length of xd, and xd is 4 times x, so we have to take this 2 times 4, and we're going to get 8 as an answer. Another parallelogram, some more diagonals. Let's see what we got going here. ES is 12.6. Well, where is ES? Well, let's mark my diagonals first. ES is here. Okay, we're supposed to find SG. Oh, seriously, that piece? It's the same one. Is it that easy? Yeah, sometimes it will be. And the only reason I'm including that here is because this is a problem where people will overwork it. They're going to think they're reading it wrong or it should have been like the last one where you have to do a little bit more heavy lifting. Sometimes people get the easy ones wrong and they shouldn't. So double check that kind of stuff when you're taking your test. Number 12. Okay, this one's going to be a little bit more challenging. Remember in parallelograms, you have two parallel lines. What I'd like you to remember from first semester is that when we had two parallel lines in something called a transversal, you ended up making a lot of congruent angles. This diagonal is the transversal, which means these angles, this one up here I don't know, is going to be the same size as this one down here that I do know. If you remember that, this is a very easy problem. The answer should be 20 degrees, which is not given, which makes this problem tricky in a multiple choice test, but it really is none of these. In the parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent, which means these two things, the 19 and the 5x minus 1, must be equal to each other. 
x equals 4. The algebra is not going to be all that difficult, but you do need to know the properties. If you don't have them on your notes, go get that note sheet I made for you. For number 14, you need to be a little bit clever. You do still have parallel lines in a transversal, which means this angle 44 is also this angle 44. Here's a parallel line, here's a parallel line, there's the transversal. Now, when you look at the top of this and pretend you're not looking at a parallelogram, but it's just a triangle. And if you remember, all the angles inside of a triangle add up to 180. So we're going to add everything together and set it equal to 180. Let's simplify. 38x plus 104 equals 180. Subtract the 104 and divide by 38. And we get 2, which is another none of these. Yeah, I know. I was mean to my kids. They had too many of those. If that was helpful, awesome. Now to get ready for your final for this semester in geometry, check out this video. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.